Hey there, my name is Jim Nguyen and welcome to my next video. In this video I'm going to cover the lock switch mod for the fight stick line of joysticks by Mad Cats. Uh, it's one of the easiest mods you can do. Uh, it extends the functionality of the lock switch to the start and back buttons or start and select for PS3 users. It's one of the easiest mods you can do. Uh, it's very simple, it should take only 2-3 minutes if you're really quick or 5-10 minutes if you need to take uh, your stick apart. and uh, do the mod. So. so here I am with the old-fashioned shaky hand cam to show you that my joystick is plugged into my Windows PC. It shows up as Arcade Stick Street Fighter 4 Fight Stick Tournament Edition. And here's the properties window. I'm going to engage the start and select buttons. As you can see, hopefully you can see, it shows up. If I turn the switch on, the buttons are still engaged. So that's to show you that I did not do the mod. So let me go ahead and reposition the camera so I can show you guys how to do this simple mod. So here we are. Uh, I already stripped my case from my previous video. So all the screws, all the mounting plates are all, all removed. And the camera is really zoomed in on the most important part of this mod, the control module. So right now the lock, uh, the lock switch is engaged in the not locked or the off position. Let me go ahead and flip it over. Put it like that. Should be able to see that. Okay. So if you were to look right here there are three points actually five the outer two are soldered to hold the switch in place and the middle three the middle one is the ground supply for the turbo and the guide buttons the one on your right is a neutral pin and the one on your left is the one that's connected to the ground I then bring out my multimeter to show you that they are in fact uh, engaged and feeding ground because it's in the off position. So here we go. I have it on uh, the sound indicator. So there you go. It's in the off position. Ground is being fed to to. Uh, home or guide and uh, turbo buttons. So let me turn it on. That means lock switch is on. And ground is no longer being fed to the two buttons. So the pin you're gonna be concerned with is the middle one, because that's the one feeding ground. So I have a piece of wire here, already stripped, and some solder. Let's see if I can pull this off with two hands and on camera. Got my soldering iron here, already preheated, and the solder works. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little solder to this point here. Then go ahead and apply the wire to the solder. Let it melt a little bit. And there you go. One wire that's needed for this mod. Very simple. Can't stress that enough. Too simple. So now that you have your wire soldered, you're probably asking, what the hell do I do with it? Well, the first thing you want to do is pull the ground wires uh, for the start and select from the terminal block. I've already done that ahead of time. And I pulled one of the wires so I can demonstrate one of uh, these cool solderless tricks that isn't 100% effective, but if you do it right, it'll work just fine. If you take a look at a standard Japanese button, you'll see these 
0.110 tabs. They have holes in them. It might be a little hard to see on camera, but if you take your threaded, I mean your uh, stripped end of the wire and thread it through the hole, what you can do is whatever side the stripped wire is on, take the flat side of the quick disconnect and slide it onto the tab. Slide it on until everything gets tight. As you see, the wire is secure. So that's a little solderless trick you can use to um, attach wires to the quick disconnects. The only problem is, depending on how thick your wire is or how thin it is, in this case I'm using 26 gauge solid uh, wire, sometimes when you insert it and then you push a tab, uh, the, the quick disconnect onto a tab, it will strip the wire, it will break it off and you don't want that. Uh, if the solderless, solderless trick is not working for you, what you can do is loosen up the quick disconnect just a bit, just to fit your wire, and then insert your quick disconnect onto there. So. And this is one of the tricks I'll be using in the dual system mod. But just to give you guys a heads up, that trick works. So let's go ahead and try that on our actual button. And get the rest of this mod completed. So I can show you on the computer that the lock switch mod does indeed work. All right, so here is my other end of the wire connected to the control module. And that's a little tough to see, so let's see if I can pop this out. Oh, there's no need. I'm going to block your view for a second there while I do this. So right now I'm threading the stripped end of the wire through the hole in the quick disconnect. I grab my flat side of my quick disconnect and insert it over the stripped wire until it's tight. And there you have it. Check that out. How easy is that? Now take the other end of the quick disconnect and daisy chain it to the ground of the start button. So now you have a ground connection going from the control module to the back button, daisy chained to the start button. So let's go ahead and test this out on the computer and uh, it should work. So here I am with the shaky cam again. So right now I have the lock switch off, so which means Start and select should work. And as you see there, it's working. Let me turn the lock switch on. Oh, check that out. The mod works. It disables start and select. See how easy that was? One wire, couple minutes, done. So to summarize the mod, all I need to do is solder a wire to the middle point here, daisy chain the ground to the back button and then to the start button. And remember, disconnect the ground for these two buttons from the terminal block. One wire, one big solution to losing to a scrub. So that's it for the lock switch mod. Very simple. Not too hard. So till next time, this is Jim Nguyen signing out.